Hi, Erica. Hi. Welcome in today. How are you feeling? How's your physical body doing today? I'm doing okay. I've been feeling a lot of tension in my neck. Um, almost like it's kind of growing up into my jaw. Like okay. I'm noticing maybe more on the right side. Maybe a little clicking when I'm when I'm eating. Okay. And a little bit of like right rib shoulder pain. Upper rib pain. Yeah. Okay. Do you feel it when you take a deep breath at all? Can you increase the no. Temperature? No. Okay. Don't feel it with that. What would you rate it at on a scale of zero to ten? Zero, like don't feel it at all. Ten being worst pain imaginable in terms of that rib and shoulder pain. trying to make it pop. Okay, yeah, let's start with a little bit of active range of motion just so I can kind of get a baseline and make sure to let me know if anything is uncomfortable. I mean, have you uncrossed your legs here for a moment? Yep, and then maybe just inch a little bit towards me because there's a little divot, yeah, there in the table. And that way your pelvis is level. Okay. So I'm um, just gonna have you go chin to chest, go down as far as you can possibly. Okay, I'm gonna move your hair if that's okay. Yes, excellent. And then going all the way up, looking up towards the ceiling. Actually feel that on the left side. Yeah. Okay. And then straight at me. And the left in the back or in the front? Like back left shoulder. Like back in here. Okay. All right. And then what about right ear to right shoulder? Right ear to right shoulder. Okay. Do you feel a pull on that left side at all? A little bit, yeah. Okay. This side. And then what about going the opposite way? Uh, feels different side yeah. to side. Yeah, what do you feel on that side? Your whole body kind of wants to go. It feels like there's less um, movement. On that right? On that side. Okay. And then what about if you rotate away from it, looking as far as you can that way? Yeah. Good. Okay. And then straight at me. And then looking to the left as far as we can here. We've got a lot more range of motion going to your right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Excellent. All right. And how about rest of the body in terms of like mid back and low back how are your hips been feeling my, and everything? my low back's been good i've been working out so my glutes what? feel sore my glutes legs feel sore i've okay. been noticing a little like right knee clicking this morning okay. and maybe a little bit of like hamstring involvement okay yeah okay. um and then and feet my feet have been sore i think from working out like okay. i don't think i'm wearing the right shoes working out Okay, when you're running or like, just jump, like jumping, hit, jumping, high intensity. Um, okay, and maybe you with the weights and squatting. I think I've been using two. My shoes just aren't as supportive. As supportive. Yeah. So is it resonating as like tightness on the bottom? Yeah, I feel like how maybe, would you describe it? Um, like along the uh, outer edge, it just feels kind of tired and sore. Okay. Okay, so we'll check in with that too. Anything else in particular that you are hoping that we address today or any expectations in terms of care today? No, that's it. Okay. That's, yeah, that's it. Okay, great. So we'll get started. Why don't we go on your back, face up, head here, and then I'm just going to talk to body and see best place to go, okay. where we want to start. Okay, where you'd like to start. We're also going to just check in with your leg length here. Just kind of get an assessment. Bring your arm up here like an antenna. 
Okay, we're just gonna ask body best place to start. Structural muscles, supine. Okay, I'm just gonna place my hands on the shoulders and the upper body, okay? Okay. Yeah, general specific. Okay, so there's a trigger point, feels like right at that C1, C2 area in the muscle. So that's probably the best place to start here. When you feel the tension in your neck and head, is it on one side more than the other at all or in jaw? I feel like it's always on the right side. Okay. All right, so I'm going to just utilize your muscle here. I'm going to have you bring your left arm up like an antenna, and I'm just going to find exactly where we need to go in terms of the spot. Yeah, right there. Get it on and relax. So we're just, just going to basically apply some steady pressure into this muscle. Set down. Let me know. If it's too much or too little pressure, for that matter, we're just also tracking your breath. So if I see you holding your breath, I'll back immediately <laughs> off. I don't want to. We're working with the body, not on the body here. So yeah, there you go. Just some nice deep breaths. Feel that curl in my eye. Okay. Is it tolerable? Yes, okay. tolerable. Yeah, it makes sense that. I mean, it just feels like it's a area of kind of concentration, maybe some tension, energy, just a shortened, shortened tissue. So what we're doing is we're lengthening through that. We're creating space. There you go. Okay, almost. I'm just waiting for it to soften. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes it will increase in sensation right before it lets go, but we're just gonna follow it in anyway because the body's saying, okay, good breathing. Like that. Good. You can kind of feel that let go there. Mm -hmm. All right, let's have you bring your left arm up. Let's see where we're going next. Structural muscle supine, neck, neck, jaw, upper, lower. Okay, actually, now we're going to go down to your right knee. <laughs> kind of jumping around a bit. The body's like, okay, this is where I want to go next. So I'm just going to see. It feels like maybe a little bit of tension in the quadricep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right there. So I'm just going to have you relax there. And we're going to, again, same kind of thing what we did with the neck. We're just holding and opening um, this area, if you will. And one thing I've been experimenting with lately is not just accessing like the muscle or the fascia, but going all the way to the bone with the touch, like with my intention. And I invite you to do the same thing too, like in your body, if it feels correct, just kind of really arriving all the way into the long bone right here, the femur. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then just, we're going with what the bone has to say. Cause a lot of times too, like, the bone is alive, it's a live tissue and it can dictate what's going on with the muscles as well. So I'm just checking in. Good, and it almost feels like we're getting up underneath the quadricep and creating space between the muscle and the bone here. Yeah, it feels very good. Good, <laughs> good. that's exactly where we wanna be. Yep, go ahead. It's like relieving any pressure here in the knee. Allowing this release to kind of inform and translate down even into the ankle, into the foot. Maybe you're experiencing some unwinding along the whole kinetic chain here. There you go. Okay, it's, it might increase in sensation because it feels like it's just about to let go. Mm -hmm. creating space. Feels like there's still a little bit more in there. Let's have you bring your arm up. Okay, not quite in that spot, but in your right knee over here. More lateral. Okay, just the joint line. This is more your lateral quadricep here. Okay, good. Yep. Relax there. So another little spot here. We're right at the attachment pretty much where that lateral quadricep Vastus lateralis meets. <laughs> Definitely tender. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Too much or doing no, okay? No, it's good. Okay. It's Let me know. I mean, I don't feel like no, normally 
I work that area. Yeah. In terms of? In terms of like massaging it or, you know, it doesn't get as much attention. Yeah. Yeah. So it feels very good. Yeah, again, kind of going into the bone, into the joint here, creating space between where the big bone of the thigh meets the big bone of the lower leg, just creating space through there. Good. That's it. Okay. All right, we'll have you bring arm up again. Let's do it this time. I would like you to move your shoulders a little bit so you're on an angle going this way and then so you can kind of throw oh sorry um this way you're gonna shimmy nope sorry stand to your back <laughs> and then go this way so your leg is kind of hanging off the table yeah yeah yes yep yep you got it but maybe going up a little bit towards your head yes thank you sorry I know it's difficult to read my mind <laughs> use my words here yeah so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna give a little bit of distraction on the knee okay mm -hmm. Okay, deep breath in, you go up the breath. And then all the way out, good, right there. Good, okay. And then I'll have you center back up on the table. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so fun. It, feel, it feels like my legs an inch longer. Okay, excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Just might be. Okay, good, knee is in more front. No, okay, best place to go next for the one in America, structural muscle. Okay, so now your body's saying, I don't want any structural muscle work after that. Like, I want a little bit of a break in terms of the physical work. Um, flower essence, that must have, like, that might have released something on an energetic level. I did, so, I knew it was an energetic Really? You felt, yeah. okay, yeah. So we're going to go to, um, we're going to go to my flower essences, the ones that I have. Um, I have several different kits. Do you want trauma kit? Do you want garden or do you want Mount Shasta? Okay, so we're just going to test and see from which which one you want from here. I'm just going to go that. Do this. This is a well-loved kit <laughs> for falling apart. Okay, here we go. So, slender rain orchid. And I'm just going to read the description of that one for you. Another one at this time. Yes. No. Structural though. Your neck, mid back, low back extremity, upper, lower, hip, your ankle, talus. Okay. Cool. So a little bit more to go on that right extremity here. Okay. So first I'm just going to contact the joint here. And then I'd like to just give a little stretch yeah. through there. Okay, we're just going to gap the joint. So with the breath, deep breath in. And then all the way out, you got it right there. <laughs> Good. Easy peasy. Okay. And we're going here for any structural muscle, general, specific, general, neck, mid back. Now we're going to do a little bit of general work in low back. Um, right on our deep. Okay. So... Um, some deep work in the low back, I think, would feel good. That might even help create some space for the upper body. And since the upper body has been holding some tension, is that okay if we put some heat on you, Erica, while we do some low back work? Yes. Okay. Yes. Awesome. So I'll have you step on over. Let me just put a cover on here for you. How's your temperature? Are you warm enough I'm, and everything? I'm warm. Okay. Not too warm? Not too warm. Okay. Perfect job. Okay. So head here. Would you like a pillow for your ankles or do you like them stretched out? I like them stretched out. Okay, off. excellent. So first, before I put heat on you, I just kind of want to get the lay of the land here and see what you're experiencing with the upper body. Yeah, that's kind of, is that kind of the rib area? Yes. Okay, 
or the area of tension that you're feeling? Yeah. Mm-hmm. When you lay down, it feels like, like yeah. rounded forward. Okay. And if I push here, is that better, worse, same? What, what, is that relieving? What does that feel like when I kind of push you through the other way? Okay. Let's put the weight, before we do any adjustments or muscle work, let's put the heat on there to let it soften a little bit, and then we'll... The same muscles that attach to the spine up here, attach down here. So it's kind of like, instead of just busting through the door, we're gonna go through the window. <laughs> and, <laughs> I like that. Okay, like kind of loosen up here, make space, and then give the body a little bit of time to soften the, the muscles up top. So, um, and these are, these hot packs are heated up um, with steam. They sit in, they're like clay packs that sit in hot water. Um, so I'm gonna pack you with some towels and it takes a little while for the heat to get to you. Um, but just give it a couple of minutes. And with that weight and the steam, it'll, it'll start to heat up. And if at any time it gets to be too much, let me know and I'll, I'll, I'll move the hot pack. Mm -hmm. So is that okay if I work directly on your skin yeah. for your low back? Okay, so I'm just going to lift your shirt here. Good, I'm just going to tuck. And then I'm going to place a towel. Just tuck a towel so I don't get any oil on your pants here. Any oil allergies or sensitivities at all, no. Erica? No? Okay. So it's just this like organic sunflower oil. You can practically eat it. You can put it in a salad dressing if you want. So it's all natural. So that's what I use. I'm just going to start a little bit here on the low back. Good. And yeah, just some nice deep breaths. Good. The right side. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. right, right. It feels much tighter than the left side. I can feel that. There you go. Good. Mm hmm. Imagine we're just creating length between the rib cage here and then the pelvis here. Okay, so just okay. Okay, actually, just gonna move the heat down a little bit right where that muscle. And we're just going to check in with the neck here, too. Was there any particular injury to the, your neck at all, Erica, or is it kind of just like cumulative? It's cumulative. No tension, okay. Good. Yeah, it feels, it, I can feel the tension. It doesn't feel like it wants me to dive right into that. Yeah, I'm still going to do a little bit of lower. It's almost like I'm going to do some reflexology for the neck, okay? Because the, um, the sacrum, this bone right here, and the occiput, this bone, they, you can kind of think of them as like brothers, basically, how the sacrum moves is reflected in the occiput, and then the bone that sits on top of the sacrum L5 articulates very similarly um, with C1. They kind of do the opposite reciprocal action. So, um, and a lot of the same, a lot of the muscles that attach to the sacrum attach all the way up into the base of the skull too. So we're just opening up the sacrum here, 
and the glutes and giving you more mobility in the sacrum, which then is going to translate, I believe, to your neck too. So just so it's like working on the sacrum will open up your neck. Sometimes, Sometimes yeah, 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 absolutely. Okay. Sometimes you have to kind of get the muscles to relax distally, as opposed to proximally, like right near the area. So we're just, yeah, good. Thank you. Okay. Good. Yeah, it feels like right upper lower back and then just a little bit of that left, yeah, left lower here. Good. Excellent. Good. Okay. So now we're going to put the heat just work. Okay, good. And then now we're just going to reach up. Yeah, now I can go into my kitchen. How long has neck tension been going on, would you say? Get deep enough. Exactly. And then also I got a new pillow and I think it's a little too too big, too fluffy, and too firm. So it's okay. not like really sinky. You know, when you put your head on it. Yeah. I'm kind of propping my head up. But I can't I, I like it, but also I know it's not it's not good for my for my neck. What about it do you like? What about it does work when you I sleep like, like being it? like I like having more than one pillow when I sleep. Yeah. When I have just one pillow, it feels like my head is below my body almost. Okay. I like having that propped up sensation. But man but have... that's something for okay. sure. Let's see what tolerable. Tolerable. Oh, okay. So you like be propped up, but when you're propped up, you wanna you wanna feel like your head can go into the pillow more instead yes. of like yeah. That I, makes... I am trying to find the perfect pillow. Yep. Which is it's actually hard to do. <laughs> so do you like more? You like more of a firm pillow? I like. Then? I kind of like a mix between mid. Firm. I like a medium. Okay. Medium yeah. I don't like the Tempur Pedic. Yeah. Um, cervical ones. Mm -hmm. They're too firm. And then it, the um, dip in the middle, it feels weird. I don't, for some reason, I don't like that. Like my neck being cradled like that. Wow, when I was talking about that, that. Whew. There's actually a guy at the Portland Saturday Market. His name is Chai. Mm. Chai is like dream pillows. And they're like all natural. He fills them with like a mix, I think of like millet and like grains. Um, and I really like, I. they're like, he uses all organic cotton and he I actually bought a meditation pillow from him it's great because you can go and you can like try out all the different pillows and if it's too full then he can like change it for you he can take some of the filling out and then if it like over time gets packed down he can modify it I don't know you might he's a really interesting guy too like very helpful when talking to him about sleep that sounds amazing I'm gonna check that out. yeah I highly I'm he also has a website, but just going there. And then there's 
Also, these pillows I had have had good experience with that are filled with lamb's wool, actually. Also all organic, all natural, and they're kind of more on the firm side, um, but I think they do have a, a softer, they might have a soft option too, or softer mid-range option, but you're right. It is, it's different for everybody. I don't really recommend like one particular pillow because everybody is different and yeah. you'll know, you know, when you have a good pillow, but also the quality of like the neck musculature, like it will help your body be more adaptable to pillows. It could be too, like the tension, there's holding tension in the neck and so body might be a little bit more persnickety. And also two kids, two small children in your bed. Like, that's a lot of pressure for that pillow, yeah. is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Better be the perfect pillow. Go ahead, low back is feeling better. I think that Erica, some cup, is that okay if I put a couple cups on your back? I know you yes. responded well to those in the past before, so um, that really just helps get in that much more to the tissues. It brings blood flow a little bit more deeper to the musculature. Okay. So let me know if, if at any time it's too much or if too much suction or if it feels pinchy at all. How are we doing with that one? Doing okay? Doing okay. Okay. Great. Okay. Here. traps here too. Cool. How's temperature with all the heat I'm packing you with? Doing okay? Okay. And I got the table on too. I can always turn that off if it gets to be too much with the heat um, table. Doing okay with that? Yes. Okay. Good. Okay. So we're just gonna let this percolate a little bit longer. Place this hot pack on your hamstrings here. And we're just going to go back into that spot that we felt on the right side here. It's already better. I know. I was going to say, it feels so much better already. There you go. Just some nice deep breaths into the abdomen. There you go. Does that spot radiate at all, Erica, or does that stay pretty vocal? That stays vocal. Okay. Actually, wait. As it starts to let go, it might shift a little bit, yeah. Now it starts to radiate a little bit. Okay. Yeah, it's softening. Okay. I know. Feels like it's like dilating, like it's opening. That's why I really like the sustained pressure. You know, you, you just like feel me just holding these spots for sometimes up to like five minutes because I feel like if given the proper stimulus, the body knows what to do, right? So what we're doing by just holding this spot is we're giving time for the nervous system, for the central nervous system, your brain, to just be aware of this spot of tension and choose what it wants to do with it. Does it want to start to relax those fibers? Does it want to reset? How does it want to respond? Does more space want to be created in there? It's just, yeah, really giving your organism time to unwind, if you will. Yeah, there you go. There you go. 
And then it feels like there's a lot of heat being released off this spot. Mm. It's like that energy being freed up. And yep, there you go. Ready to move. Uh huh. Okay. Just gonna move these cups a little bit. Will probably increase in sensation because I'm just using the suction to like pull that blood. Yep. There you go and free up. That's the fascia. I know. Not too much. Borderline. Okay. Borderline. <laughs> Borderline. <laughs> Say no more. <laughs> Say no more. Are they a really deep color? You know the left one yeah. more so right here. Yeah. Yep. Mm hmm Very good. A little bit. Yeah. So you're going to want to drink a lot of water today because you're basically pushing blood into places that maybe it hasn't been as blood rich. So um, with that, you know, there's metabolites that are released into the bloodstream and um, then the kidneys and the liver have to filter it out and wow. just the more hydrated you are the better okay because the blood the blood kind of works as like the ups man the fedex man and like the garbage <laughs> man all in one it like delivers nutrients and oxygen but then it also like carries metabolites and any kind of toxins out of the cell so and then carries it to the detoxification organs and the blood is mostly water, and the more hydrated we are, the more we can support that system. And so sometimes getting body work can be a little dehydrating too, just because it's almost like a passive workout, if you will. You know, we're working the muscles similarly on some level to how you would be during a workout. We're moving blood flow through them. So I wonder if you don't drink water, if the bruises get darker than if you do. I wonder. I definitely tend to see darker bruising happen with people who are more dehydrated or who drink less water. Wow. Yeah. Generally speaking, I mean, go. Okay. Excellent. little bit of compression on your hamstrings here. Something so nice about getting weight on the hamstrings for whatever reason. It's like the hamstrings, well, do so much to help support the low back. Sometimes we carry excess tension in the hamstrings and just, just a little bit of compression through there, I feel like can really kind of help the system relax that much more. Okay, so I'm just going to have you do a hamstring curl. Yep, if you're right, and kind of go heel to butt for me. Good. You can relax the foot, though. Yep, just bring it up. Unless there's discomfort with that. How are we doing? Okay, good. Keep holding for me. Actually, there's more to do in the right low back. There's still a little bit more there. Good. Relax. Just a little spot in your QL. It feels like your quadratus lumborum. Side be so much tighter than the other side? Well, it's, it's the body's way of adapting to any kind of stress. So the body tends to torque to create stability. Mm -hmm. um, it could be adapting, your low back could be adapting off a little bit of scoliosis mm -hmm. that you've got going in your T spine. This could be a little bit of compensation for it. Um, could be that you may stand on this side more 
or more dominant or when you had well when you had your babies I mean were you holding them on one hip more than the other at all do you remember always on the left always on the left okay right-handed yep yeah it was hard to get the shelf on the left on the right side like I couldn't hike my hip the right the way I could on my left interesting well, and that could be because there's already, you know, shortened muscle here wouldn't activate as much. Or just felt weird to carry them on that side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't always know why one side is more tight than the other. It could be, it's oftentimes when things are tight or holding too much tone, is because they're used too much or too used too little. You know, we either use that side all the time or we're not using it enough, right? So, and certain sides can be um, more inhibited than others. I, mean, I, I find it all the time that we all have a side, a particular side that, of course, we reserve the right to not always have that particular side be tighter, but um, it's, it's, the body displays pattern. The body displays our habits. It shows us basically what it is that we do um, on a physical level, but also on a mental emotional level too. Like it's, it holds memory. The body holds memory. So if you're doing something in particular on this right side, or we could also get into the energetics of the right side, um, the right side representing more of the masculine um, energy, maybe there's something about about the right side um, just feels more um, feels more of a need for protection for whatever reason or guarding. Good. What comes up for you when when I say that? Well, I've been working out with um, weights. Okay. And I always wonder like. If I'm already feeling kind of tight, am I making it worse by working, like working out, re, like um, reinforcing that pattern of mm -hmm. tension? Mm -hmm. But then I try and really focus on the left side because the right side Good. has a ton of, uh, has is always the more dominant one. Mm -hmm. So it feels like I'm always trying to like think about my left glute and my left leg and my left calf. Good. And, yeah. And like trying to really focus on activating that when doing squats and lunges. Excellent. But then also I'm like, well, does that reinforce it? I mean, it could be like the whole you know, chicken versus egg, which is, is it good to activate when this is already tight and not? Just some random thoughts I have. Well, how do you, I mean, when you compare glutes, do you feel like your left glute is more activated compared to your right? Or no, do you feel, I feel like when I'm doing the squat, my right, your, my yes. right, everything on my right is really active. Yes. And then I have to really focus on activating this. The, the left, left side. side. Yep. 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 That, that makes sense. sense. Well, what you could do prior to working out is you could just do a little bit of lacrosse ball or foam rolling on your right side. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's good. And then I think what you're doing in terms of facilitating and focusing on your left while you're working out is great. That's one of the best things that you can do. And exercises like a squat requires both sides. You know, if you're keeping your pelvis level, you're not going to, I don't think you're going to reinforce the negative pattern. Do you, when you do squats, do you, do you do it in front of a mirror? Do you have like any kind of feedback device or a trainer? That might not be a bad idea just to get like to film yourself like head on or from behind or from the side just to kind of see what both hips are doing and the low back. Like sometimes when I'm squatting, I'll, I'll take a video just to, just to check form, you know? Good. Okay. Let's see, Erica, I'm going to have you kick up here for me somewhere in there. Let's you know structural, structural muscle power. Okay, I'm going to have you flip on over and go face up for me. We're going to do another flower essence. Okay, let's bring the arm up for me. Good, hold there. I think I'm going to find if there's an infinite 
love, inspired action, quiet mind, inner peace. Thank you, Miss King Ginger, truth teller, truth teller, drop, drop. The... Are you still taking truth teller, or did you? Okay, okay. Um, body's wanting one dropper full of that, which is, in the end, kind of neck, throat chakra yeah. support. And then I'm going to have you bring arm up for me for another one. Okay, so one more. I want to do citrus kit here. Okay, have you bring arm up again. And you want Tangelo. I'll read the description of that for you. Correct. Good. Okay, let's see if there's another one at this time. No, it goes to structural. It goes to your neck on the left and the right. See one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Supine prone, actually. Prone. Okay. So actually what body wants to do next is an adjustment to the neck, but more face down and then the bottom vertebrae, right where it meets your thoracic vertebrae right here. So let's set it up, let's see how it feels, mm -hmm. um, and then I'll give a little bit of an adjustment through there if it feels correct. Okay, so I'll have you flip on over, Erica. I forget, have we done this one before? I, I was just wondering if we pulled out. I can't remember. Okay, so I'm just gonna move your hair so I don't pull it. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna use your shirt too so I don't um, slip here. I'm gonna traction, and then just gonna traction down kind of on your shoulder here and then I'm gonna give you a little bit of a turn. Now if I go here, how does that feel, Erica? Any pain or discomfort with that? What comes up for you? Well, instantly it was a, a fear thing because, I don't know, choke. Like, okay, because I'm, I'm contacting the front part of the neck? Yeah. Okay. What about if I just use activator through there no to see if we clear it? Because I don't, I don't want there to be any kind of like resistance in the body. And if it, if you go into that fear response, we absolutely do not want that. So the sound of this is worse than what it actually is. I'm gonna just do it on your hand so you can kind of feel. It's just an impulse that I'm gonna go right on that right side of the vertebrae here and just give a little couple of impulses, which will help give you set more seg increased segmental range of motion. Okay. So right here. So we'll do it with the breath. On the exhale, I'll give a couple clicks. Good, and then right there. Okay, we'll do a couple more. Good, right there. Okay. Good. That's better. Okay. Let's have you kick up here again for me. Have you flipped? I'm gonna have you go face Erica. Now we're gonna do a little bit of jaw work. Okay, so now that we release some of the tension in the neck, <laughs> um, now body wants to go into the jaw. And one of the best ways to contact any jaw tension is going intraorally. So that means I'm gonna put a glove on and go inside the mouth and address the muscles that are um, in, in inside. So 
Um, sometimes it feels sharp like a fingernail. I promise it's not my fingernail. Uh, it's just that if those tissues have never been touched therapeutically, it can kind of feel sharp, like it's kind of like connective tissue, that fascia it might be dry or tight. And so we're going to go really softly into those spots. If at any time it's too much, make sure to let me know and I'll back off immediately. You can also talk while we're doing it. It just what might push me out a little bit. You can let me know, okay, a little more or a little less. But it'll just kind of, or you can also use a thumb by saying, yep, game on, or no, please decrease, or, you know, stop. Is this, okay? And it's probably only going to be in there like three minutes tops. It's a small area, but um, yeah, it'll, and I'm probably going to use just about like this much pressure. Okay. okay, so I'm going to have you open slightly when you're ready. Yep. I'm going to contact inside the cheek to wet the glove, okay? Mm -hmm. So just like so. Beautiful. And then you can close the jaw. Excellent. I'm going to go back towards the jaw itself. Yep. And you can already feel kind of engaging in that tissue. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah, the jaw just gets to relax now. It gets to do whatever it wants. If it wants to just kind of hang in neutral, great. We're just going to unwind it. Yep, it's already letting go. Unwinding and creating some space here. Good. So, yep, that's our spot. I'm just going to hold. There you go. And that kind of fluttering of the muscle, is it disengaging and letting go? So you're doing great. That's it. Yep. And sometimes, again, it'll increase in sensation right before it lets go. Good. I'm going to have you open slightly. I'm going to go a little bit towards your left, but I'm not going to cross over your midline. I'm just going to go on the underside of the teeth right here. Yep. Wow. Yeah. Okay, and I'm just going to hold. I'm going to have you open slightly like a half millimeter right there. So I'm basically pinning the muscle, and you're just kind of stretching it against my pressure. There you go. And then relaxing, kind of closing. Yep, I'm just going to hold. There it goes. Good, we're going to go back more laterally, meaning back towards me a little bit, yeah. And I'm going to go up towards the joint just a little bit more where my external thumb is. We're just right through there. I'm going to give you a little bit of stimulus externally into the muscles of the jaw here. There you go. And then I'm just going to hold for five, four, three, two, and last little bit. And one. Good. And then back down. Oh, I wasn't too bad. Good. Okay. How does it feel now? Can you feel a difference at all? I want you to do the left side. Okay. All right. Now it's not. That's it's very open. Yeah. Like, noticeably different side to side how open that side feels now. Did, Did that right happen? side feel a little sharp at all at any point? No. Like a fingernail? Okay. It's not good. Sharp. Okay. All right. So we're going to balance you out. We're going to do basically the same exact thing on this side. So nice and easy. I'm going to have you open slightly. I'm going to contact inside the cheek. A little wider for me if you got it. Yeah. Good. And then slowly relax all the way. Beautiful. Yeah. Just kind of finding neutral wherever the jaw wants to go. It doesn't have to work right now. Just, I mean, we're already in the tissue. You can already feel that muscle. So I'm just going to apply a little bit of steady pressure to that muscle. Yep. And we're just letting the muscle start to unwind there. There you go. Good. Left side feels like it just has a little bit more to say. So mm -hmm. we're just taking our time with it, okay? Mm -hmm. there. Okay, and I'm just going to do a little bit of tapping right here over the joint. Just to bring the body's awareness that much more right into the spot. Nice and easy. Next layer, it's letting go. Yep. Beautiful. I know. I know. Nice. There. Good. And I'm going to have you open slightly.
with me. Yep. In terms of my direction of pressure, yep. There you go. Good. Last little bit. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. Good. Last, almost there. <laughs> It's, yeah, it's like pulling me in. Thank you. There we go. <laughs> wow. Good. Okay. Yeah. Better. I felt like my whole neck, like every moment, it released the drop. Good. Yeah, I felt that too. Okay. Good. Okay. Well, we're just going to go back in actually. Let me just recheck here. Yeah. Oh. <gasps> Feels more like you. Yep. Okay. Good. Have you bring your arm up again for me? Let's see. Structural muscle. General, specific, general neck. Okay, yeah, next we're just going to do some general work on the neck. Now that it's loosened up, we're going to follow it in that much more, okay? Okay. I'm just going to contact the front a little bit too. Okay. Your SEMs feel a lot. More open mm -hmm. through here. These muscles are good. Just gonna be deeply good. Yeah. Okay. It's not too grabby. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? Not okay. Too grabby. Just gonna get into your scaling here. This muscle, yeah. feel like you just refer everywhere and then you like work like up and then you can get like down into your shoulder. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've been doing push-ups. Oh nice, way to go. And I feel like maybe I'm using my neck for the Yeah, yeah because the they're not yeah super strong. It's interesting how working on these spots. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I'm just going to hold both of them here at the same time. Imagine creating space between the ear and the shoulder itself, giving more length through the neck and in between the vertebrae, giving space for the discs to breathe that much more. And I just give you a little distraction through there. Increasing the flexibility of the tissues, a little range of motion.
little bit into the suboccipital muscles here. Just going to feel my fingers kind of curling under the base of the skull. It's tiny little muscles, but they are mighty. Mm -hmm. Hold up, help to hold up the head. Actually, rotate the head. Gonna follow that into the temporalis, which is our one of our external jaw muscles here. Just to close the jaw, so sometimes when we're clenching, um, this is that muscle that turns on, kicks on, and even though after we stop clenching, sometimes it still ends up holding tension. So we're just giving a nice reset through there. Even like sometimes on the onset of a headache, working this muscle can help prevent that headache from manifesting. Mm -hmm. Some people like rub peppermint on their temples, and that helps. But that what they're really doing is not only aromatherapy, but also targeting this muscle here, major muscle of the jaw. Just that spot. It's like yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Oh, I you know. Feel like okay. <laughs> no, I know. What were you saying earlier? Nico, pick up your toys. <laughs> Don't make me come over there. Uh, <laughs> out of there, Nico. Out. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, yeah just, just resetting. resetting. You can feel, feel a little bit more fluidity wow. in there now. Oh, that feels so much better. Good. Yay. Actually, what we should do too. We're gonna just do a little bit of the grass in through there. Oh, that sounds fun. Okay, it's medical grain stainless steel. It's it's um, dull. I promise. Sometimes it feels sharp. I doubt it's gonna feel sharp on my head. I'm gonna use it on your head. Yeah. So we're just gonna kind of like it's gonna feel like maybe a little exfoliation or that I'm like combing through the hair. I'm just gonna trace the muscle. That feels nice with the cold. Oh, good. And this gets some more of the fascial layer. It it can drag the tissue in a different way than my hands can. I was against these tools for a long time because I thought, oh, being a massage therapist before being a chiropractor, I was like, oh, there's nothing I can't do with my hands, you know? But then a friend of mine, a dear friend, Dr. Andy Shupp, um, he was like, you gotta try it, you gotta try it. And he works with a lot of athletes. And sure enough, like I, he would, he would have me contact the muscle and then he would do like three to four minutes of grass in, and then I would touch it again. And I was like, oh my gosh, there's such a difference. And it just felt like there was more glide in the tissues. And I was sold. Like you can, you can um, target like Achilles tendonitis and just like any kind of like chronic muscle dysfunction. These, these instruments do, they just do what my hands can. And so what we're doing is we're like getting in there and contacting that fascial layer and just helping with the glide of the muscle between the fascia, that connective tissue. So instead of being like stuck on each other, it kind of gives them more like the gliding? Yes, yes. So more than fluid and blood flow and like lymph flow and all that good stuff? Yes. Wow. Or I guess I feel like with my hands, I'm kind of more pushing into the tissues yeah. and I can kind of like pull through. But even then with this, it just, it, it feels really good. I feel like it gives lasting, like maybe even more lasting results if we do like the manual work, hands on, and then I go into here. It's like, it's just contact. It's giving the muscle different stimuli. stimuli. And so with that, maybe contacting more of the fascia, the muscle tends to respond better. And it's just another way of getting blood flow to it. It's funny because I thought it might hurt because it's on like more bone. It's yeah. It's like a thick muscle there, but it feels... Like you're just combing my head, my hair. <laughs> yeah, and sometimes at the, like at the scalp line is where we can carry a lot of tension, so it just can feel kind of good to just wow. get. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I mean, and you've had that done with my hands. I mean, it just feels different, right? Completely different. Like, I mean, that, that has its place too, you know, the manual work, but then just using the instrument. It's just another way of giving the body support, expedited tissue recovery. Yeah. 
Can we ever do like grass on the face? Yes. Yeah, yeah. In fact, we could do a little bit of that through your ambassadors and yeah, let's do that. out here does it leave um marks like cupping it can leave that like petechiae that kind of spotted bruising um but we'll we will go and that's only if you use a lot of pressure and you don't need to use a lot of pressure on the face so um i might give you a little bit of like rouge like blush temporarily but by the time you get off the table you'll be it'll be gone because it does increase it just increases the blood flow and helps pull the blood flow to the surface of the skin. How did they discover this? Like, is it, I mean, did someone just try a tool on like, somebody's muscle? Or were they studying the product? It's just so cool that they even right? thought of this technique. Well, Graston technique was, I think, adopted by like, they are using, they're utilizing in like a like ancient technique of gua sha, which is like Chinese, where they use the jade stone or a ceramic spoon, and that's been around for thousands of years. And then somebody was probably like, oh, instead of using jade, let's use stainless steel, you know, and let's shape it this way so we have more control over the instrument. Because I have, I think it's seven different ones, and they're all. Um, we'll use a different one for your jaw. They're all designed for different areas of the body. So, I mean, chiropractic was stolen from Chinese medicine as well. The Twina is ancient form of bone setting. And so, I mean, D.D. Palmer, when he went to China, he went to China and then he came back and he established chiropractic. So, like, a lot of what I do is really rooted in Chinese medicine, but um, it's it's been... It's been forgotten. It's been forgotten that, you know, chiropractic is really just born from ancient Chinese medicine, in my interpretation anyway. Same thing with the gua sha, no different. Cupping too. Cupping is a Chinese form of healing as well. Go ahead. Yeah, it's interesting because you're. It's, it feels like right now the body wants a little bit more of that pressure. I know I'm kind of toggling back and forth between the, the instrument and my hands, but it's almost like when I was using the instrument, it was just kind of scraping over, and the body wants just a little bit more deep work through there. Yeah, you can kind of feel those spots. Does that one radiate at all, Eric, or does that stay pretty local? Yeah, that one, when you hit the certain spot, it goes down this way. I feel like there's all this fresh blood going to my head <laughs> and like brain. Excellent. <laughs> there probably is. <laughs> At least some. Yeah. We're opening up all the channels. So my nose is a little tender on this side because Nico and I, like, I went in and Nico, oh no, right on, and he's got such a hard head. Oh no, and it's still really tender. How long ago was that? I think it was Friday. Not Friday. Was it Friday? Was it yesterday. Yesterday or <laughs> Thursday? I think okay. It was Thursday. Okay. But he, I mean, I cried. Like, it made my. Eyes, eyes water. water. Oh, okay. Well, maybe it's good that we're doing a little bit of all this face work and yeah. jaw work. I touched it the other day and I was like, oh gosh. I knock you good. Did, Did it bruise at all? Or get, is it no, it's just, it's really, t- it's surprisingly tender. I mean, he just has the hardest head. <laughs> I'm impressed. Because I think 
because it didn't. I mean, he was just like nothing. Nothing happened to him. <laughs> so you're like, Ow. well, if it was a skull as opposed to a face, I mean, yeah, it was like, like the top of his head. Oh and, yeah, and it was like, you know, not a light impact. Oh, riffing. I'm so sorry. It's just not fun. It's got that hard preschooler head. <laughs> Probably like the hardest part of the set, but okay. Yeah, we're gonna do this one so you can take a look. Like I'm gonna use this part Ooh, right here. Okay. Yeah, and you can just relax jaw too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that feels so good. Yeah. Did you need to wash off the? Wrinkles. Yeah, actually, I was just going to say my friend Libby Gra from Urban Renewal, she does a whole gua sha facial that feels amazing. And I often like send people who have jaw, like chronic jaw stuff too, to her because she, she does, um, like she does internal work as well, but she's like more stretching the fascia as opposed to the trigger point work. She just approaches it from a different way and it feels really good. And then like with the steam, of the facial and then all the massage to the face, like that can also be just like a really great way to treat the jaw and the head and the neck. But yeah, to answer your question, it does um, help with wrinkles, I think, and the prevention of. And then Tressa Hoffman, she's um, she owns Scrape and she does a lot of massage with um, the gua sha instrument and then she'll do a little bit on the face too and do the skull and it feels really good. Good, so we're gonna do the same thing. You feel a little bit of a difference? Okay. Hello, left side, huh? Yeah. A little bit more on that side for whatever reason. Not much, but enough. You don't have to worry about wrinkles. You have like none whatsoever. You've got such good skin. Thank you. Yeah. There you go. That's it. Okay. Yeah. Good. Okay. All right, Eric, I'm going to have you bring your arm up. We're gonna say hello to your feet too, and why don't we use the brown yes. pepper? Um, is that okay if I use a little peppermint oil on you too? That helps with circulation. And I'm just gonna get into the bottoms of the feet. We'll do a little reflexology to help ground you after all that upper body work we did. <laughs> let's, let's bring you back. <laughs> So what shoes are you working out in right now? Well, I was, so I'm working out in my, just like two pairs of running shoes. And the ones I've been working out in are uh, for overcoating. Okay. So. Yeah, so they put so you more into a supination. Exactly. Yep, okay. Um, but I like them more than my other running shoes, which are, um, uh, they're the, like, all own um, Hoka's? No. Nike, Nike Epic Reacts. Okay. And um, but they, I find myself when I run in them, um, they're like too bouncy to do yeah. any weight training. Okay. Yeah. So too like, soft. I don't like to do that. I need to get a new pair of weight trainers. Yeah. But every now and again, too, I like to work out barefoot. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And I keep thinking, weights because sometimes I feel like I get more stability when when doing like squats and lunges when I don't have shoes. 
You absolutely do. That's absolutely correct. Which is so like, sometimes I'm like, is this, this part bad? Like every now and again, like, is this bad to do this or that way? Because then I'm like, it feels better to, or not more, to. Yeah, more natural. It feels yep. better to do it, I feel like my range of motion and I can feel my feet. And yes. That makes sense. Yeah, it absolutely feet. does. Yes, you're whereas, spot on. Whereas like sometimes I'm unstable or in, is it unstable or instable? Unstable. Unstable, yeah. When I'm in my shoes. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. It's like the brain has to work extra hard in terms of that proprioception because it, the feedback is less. There's not a hard yeah. feedback that's happening. So that, yeah, in fact, they advise against it, like Kelly Starrett and uh, Mark Ripito, like especially when you're squatting, you you want like a hard surface, you know, you want like a like com those old Converse. I forget uh, what are the Chuck. What are they? Oh, uh, the one stars or all stars? Yeah, all stars. Yeah, those high tops. What are the high tops called? I cannot remember them. I feel like they're all stars. Okay. Yeah, yeah all stars. The flat bottom. Yeah. They say that that's one of the best things to to um, squat in because there isn't a whole lot of foam you can feel the ground and then or you have more of a heel that puts you more into your mid midfoot um, that then you know I've seen people I, my, I myself I actually have taken off my shoes for deadlifting you know and just deadlifting and barefoot bare feet as opposed to having like a cushy heel or yeah I, I think it's smart it'd probably be a good idea to get some trainers that don't have a whole lot of cushion. And I was using the Nike free trainers, which is like um, supposed to mimic barefoot. Yeah. Okay. But I didn't remember both. I didn't like them all the time. I still felt like I was doing this in them. Does that make sense? So like supinating the running shoes that are for oh for me. Yeah. I still felt like I was gripping the outside of my, like I still was over pronating in your shoes. Do you tend to over pronate or over yes. supinate? Okay. I think I go, yeah, on the outside. On the outside is more supinate. This well, is, is supinate. It? Yeah. Pronate is like when your arch is dropping this way. Oh. I think you might more pronate. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that kind of take you out of that. Well, that one makes sense. That makes sense. <laughs> Bring them in next time. Okay. I'd like to look at them. I'd like to see how your foot is moving. What are you wearing? What are you wearing today? Are those just cruiser shoes? Those aren't necessarily workout shoes. Those are just sports. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm just gonna do a little bit of mobilization here. Toes. Good. Okay. Okay, and we're just gonna do the ankle on this side too here. Deep breath in and out. Good, right there. Good yeah. job. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> okay, put on this side too. Can you feel a different side to side yes. a little bit? <laughs> I will check in with body and see about like a neck adjustment today. I feel like we kind of need to bring energy down into your feet and then we can recheck and see. But when you check in right now, like, how are you feeling? I, I know. I don't feel like I need it. Does it feel like you need it? Excellent. Okay. Um, also, we'll check in with the rib too. I haven't forgotten about that. But yeah, neck could have been mostly muscle and jaw tension. Too, but we'll, we'll just see. Huh. It feels different on my side. Yeah, it does. Like maybe you supinate more on this side and pronate, pronate more on that side. side. Yeah, <laughs> that's what it feels like. Uh huh. So we're just going to work Which this side. Which is why I buy the shoes based on the right foot. Mm hmm. I mean, I love how the little bump 
let's say I on my left foot take and I write it down, right? Yes. Uh huh. It feels like I can do it. When I'm on the right foot bringing my left leg up just to the side, just like this, I'll I'll feel I'll feel that like right on my doctor's like pelvic. Like I know there's some instinct. When you're on your right side, when you're on got the right versus the left. Mm -hmm. I feel like typically your right side tends to be a little shorter. Your right leg, like your right hip, tends to go back. Mm -hmm. And then what the body will do to compensate for a short leg, not like this leg is actually shorter, it's not, but if the pelvic area twists and rotates, the body will present as a short, like when you first got on the table, the right leg was just a little bit short, like the right side was shortened, right? So what the body will do to compensate often is supinate the foot to create a more rigid foot, a more longer leg. And then sometimes the body will then compensate um, to pronate on the left for, or your opposite side to compensate for a longer leg because of the way the pelvis is tipped. Does that makes sense so I, I and this just the way your foot feels like when I bring it into pronation it just feels like it it's more natural for it to go like this like there's more flexibility going that way than this way and then when I go here you can pull it into pronation better and then yeah. it just it doesn't supinate as much on this side it feels like it goes more into pronation so yeah but I think what you're doing with the like with squats and then maybe yeah just looking into more supportive footwear when you are squatting and working out with um, weights, that will be much better. And and then also, yeah, I'd be curious to like, you could also send them, text them to me, text the videos to me, be curious to see your squat form. Okay. Maybe I'll do that with all the different shoes. Yeah. I'll do the squat, I'll do barefoot squat, and then I'll do the squat yeah. over, yeah. the over shoes. Yep. Beautiful. Yeah, I'd be curious. Really curious. God, this is opening up really nice. We're just going to do a little bit more right here. Oh, perfect. Next week? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Prelude. Yes. Good. Okay. We already adjusted the ankle on the set. I'm just going to double check. Yeah, that feels good. Okay. Let's leave that there. Let's just check in with the body based on everything that we did today. Is there anything else at this time? Structural, structural muscle flower single. Okay, trauma kit, garden and nerve around Shasta. Body's like one more flower essence, please. I do love those <laughs> okay. Alrighty. Arm up again.
actually neck and my back really bad. Do you want to see? No. Neck, yes, no, yes, yes. Erica, let's try to just kind of walk a little bit. I'm going to have you, right now your body's saying, that's, an, that's, that's enough. <laughs> I'm complete. Um, but maybe you'll just have you move around a little bit and then see if I need to adjust that rib. Okay. It's going to be just rock. How are you feeling? Good. <laughs> Excellent. Good. Okay, let's have so much taller. Yeah, you look like you're walking taller. Here, bring your arm like so. Good. Hold this. Keep holding. Structural, structural. Rib, yes, no, complete. Yeah. Do you want to pick a card for today? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Does she want chocolate today? Hi, it's good. Yes. Okay, um, infinite love inspired. Two, two of the inspired today, which is all about creativity, kind of accessing that second chakra area. Yeah. Okay. Do you have the person who flowers your space? I don't have, oh, I have birds. birds. <laughs> Sorry. <Okay. laughs> Somebody knows. Somebody knows. <laughs> okay. Plants. You want birds. I don't have very many left, but I will. Um, you don't want plant. You want, oh gosh. Actually, I'm going to just give you quotes and birds, okay? Oh, yes. What I have left. Okay. All right. So have you pick. There's, like I said, there's five. So yours is here. Okay. Okay. Oh, my gosh. oh, it's one of my favorite ones. Just when the caterpillar thought the world was over, it became a butterfly. Hmm. Love that one. Mm hmm. I think that's really, like, yeah, I think that's really good opportune because it's like with your, like everything that you're stepping into, you are emerging as the butterfly. It's been, what's it called when it's in the cocoon? It's the chrysalis. Chrysalis. chrysalis? Yeah. Chrysalis. The chrysalis. You're emerging from the chrysalis, it feels like. I mean, yeah. Yeah, way to go. I mean, I, I feel like I also want to bring up like your business right now because it's so important to me and this is applicable. But Erica just opening up the Yoni Yurt, which has been in the chrysalis for a really long time. Yes. And now it's like emerging and what you are bringing to other women, what you offer to me as your client. Like I am so appreciative and so excited that now like, you really cleared my energy. I feel so joyful. <laughs> you came in <laughs> joyful. <laughs> okay. I feel like just, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, back in my body. Thank Yay. you. Yay. Well, thank you so much for trusting me with your care today and for being open to, you know, this experience in yeah. terms of filming it and what goes on. And yeah, I really appreciate you. Well, I'm glad I appreciate you. <laughs> Yay. Yay! And that's...